Section 26 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brian Keenan. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1, Section 26. Saturday, 26. My soul was composed, and in pursuit of more of God. Having read the conquest of Rome by Alaric, and the rending of the Western Empire by the Goths, I was led to observe how part of the revelation of St. John was then fulfilled. But much more of this is yet to come. Lord's Day 27 After explaining the parable of the sower at Mrs. D's, I preached at Annapolis to a large company, some serious and some gay and trifling, on these compassionate words of Christ, How often would I have gathered thy children together, and ye would not. Monday, 28. As the rain prevented my attending the appointment, I visited the jail, and found an unhappy mortal under sentence of death, who was very ignorant, but so susceptible of religious advice that he was melted into tears, and shook like a leaf. Tuesday, 29. The Lord discovered to my view a greater depth of holiness, and my soul thirsted for it. I met with Brother H., who had been to Virginia, but having some scruples of conscience about taking the test oath, was obliged to return. May the Lord direct us all how to pursue the most wise and prudent measures. The next day I preached at Magotty, where the work of God goes on successfully. Thursday, 31. At Mr. P.'s there were about a hundred souls who seemed much alive to God. Here I appointed a quarterly meeting at Love Feast on my return from Baltimore and Frederick next Saturday fortnight. Friday, August 1. The Lord gave me spiritual peace, but my soul was on stretch for a greater degree of holiness and deeper communion with God. I pant to feel thy sway, and only thee to obey. Thee my spirit gasps to meet, this my one, my ceaseless prayer. Make, O oh make my heart thy seat, O oh, set up thy kingdom there. I have now finished reading sixteen volumes of the Universal History. Lord's Day 3 In the forenoon the poor rich sinners were very attentive in the schoolhouse on Elk Ridge, and it is possible the Lord may raise a people among them to fear and love him. But at Mr. R.'s in the afternoon, the congregation was very dull, though I spoke strong words from the Almighty's awful declaration concerning the ungodly. These shall go away into everlasting punishment. Monday 4. Rode thirty-seven miles to the Frederick Quarterly Meeting without breaking my fast, and was under the necessity of preaching when I arrived. The next day our meeting began with a love feast, and we had a powerful melting time. Friday 8. Having visited my friends in Baltimore, I rode to Mr. G.'s, met Mr. R., and had some agreeable conversation on the work of God in different parts of America. Went the next day to the Forks, where I met with Brother G.S. in great harmony, and found divine assistance in dispensing the word. Monday 11. We settled all our little affairs in the spirit of love, and Brother S. partly agreed to go with me to the quarterly meeting. But, alas, though my confidence in Christ was not shaken, yet I felt myself less than the least in the company, and unworthy of the favor of both God and man. How merciful is God in giving us such abasing views of ourselves, which have a powerful tendency to drive us closer to Him, and keep us always in the dust. Tuesday 12. After I had publicly declared to the righteous, The God whom we serve is able to deliver us, we then had a solemn, comfortable love feast, and having done our business, I returned to Mr. G.'s, where many people attended to receive the word of truth. And we have reason to believe the work of God is now reviving. Wednesday 13 was spent at Mr. G.'s, and after some conversation, I found Brother S. was not to go with me, because Mr. R. did not choose to spend a quarter in Baltimore Circuit. 
Indeed, he has not taken a regular circuit since we have been in America. So I was obliged to go into a new circuit with a young exhorter who had deserted me once before. But all contentions wound my spirit, so I passively submitted. Thursday, 14. My mouth was opened and my heart was enlarged at W.L.'s, and I hope the word was made a blessing to many souls. Friday, 15. Rode to Curtis's Creek to hold a quarterly meeting there, and the next morning we began with a love feast. It was a time of great power, and exceeded all we had ever seen in these parts. There was something very admirable in the Christian simplicity of the people, who spoke the language of warm and artless love. Brother S. preached a moving sermon on the barren fig tree, and many sinners wept. Lord's Day 17 The rain prevented my going to the ridge, and Brother S. from going to Baltimore. So we had a very melting time in discoursing on the subject of the Canaanitish woman. And, I believe, Brother S. was persuaded that he ought to be in this circuit with me. Monday, 18 this was a day of much temptation, but my deliverer was at hand. At C.S.'s I found a few from the ridge, who informed me that some attended yesterday in the rain. Hence I conclude, many of them had a desire to be saved, and that it is best for a preacher to attend his appointments, if the apparent risk is not too great. I preached to the people with much affection. Many felt the weight of the word, and a young woman was convinced of sin. Tuesday, 19. The Pacific Spirit of Grace had possession of my willing heart. After preaching at Mr. G.'s to a few souls as dull as usual, I crossed the river in the rain, and though I expected to feel the consequence, yet suffered no injury. Wednesday, 20. How unlike real Christians are some that bear the name, the Lord hath enabled me, of late, to be faithful to the families which have come in my way. And we must overcome our natural bashfulness and backwardness to assist the precious souls of our fellow men, who are on the brink of endless ruin, and see it not. On Thursday, both the public congregation and the class were powerfully melted at Mr. C.'s. Lord's Day 24 I was much fatigued by riding twenty-five miles and preaching twice. A report that a British fleet was sailing up the Chesapeake Bay has induced many people to quit Annapolis. Lord, give thy people faith and patience, sufficient for their day of trial. Monday, 25. My soul confided in God, but was sweetly distressed with an ardent desire for more complete holiness. I have lately read Walker's sermons with much pleasure. We had an awful storm this evening at nine o'clock. The thunder, lightning, and sweeping winds were all in commotion. With reverence I turned my mind on the dread majesty and power of God, who, by the elements in which we live, contends with man. Such a scene as this was enough to strike the boldest sinner with terror, and make him even shudder at a wicked thought. And how dare wicked men sin at any time before a God so terrible? Is he less present at one time than another? No, verily. But they desire not the knowledge of God. Their surprise must be great beyond all expression. When disembodied they suddenly find themselves, by woeful experience, acquainted with nothing pertaining to their offended God, but his inexorable justice and vengeful power, of which the awful scenes we now behold in the contending elements are but a faint resemblance. Then how much better is it to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season? Happy the man whose hopes rely on Israel's God. He made the sky, and earth, and seas, with all their train. His truth forever stands secure. He saves the oppressed, he feeds the poor, and none shall find his promise vain. Tuesday, 26. T.W. informed me that they had made choice of me to preach in the Garrison Church. But I shall do nothing that will separate me from my brethren. 
I hope to live and die a Methodist. Wednesday, 27th. Though it rained, I rode twenty-five miles to Magadie, but was tempted and shut up in my mind, while endeavoring to announce, If God be for us, who can be against us? But the next day my soul was happy at Mr. P's, and I admitted four persons into the society on trial. The militia were now collecting from all quarters. On the Lord's day my soul was much drawn out and blessed, in preaching on 1 John 2, 16, 17. Perhaps it will not be in my power to preach much longer with a clear conscience. But if it should be so, my greatest concern would be for the people of God. For many of the poor sinners seem deaf to all entreaties, and I seem to be only a witness for God against them, that their damnation may be just, if they will not obey the gospel. Monday, September 1. The Lord refreshed my own spirit, while I encouraged the few faithful souls who were present, from the words of our Lord, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Brother D.R., who had returned from Virginia, met me today. Wednesday 3. My soul was watered with the peaceful influence of divine grace. But what I enjoyed was a stimulus urging me to groan for more. I spent much of my time in reading Law's serious call, and Baxter's call to the unconverted, and think the latter is one of the best pieces of human composition in the world, to awaken the lethargic souls of poor sinners. My mind was under heavy exercises, so I fasted and preached with much freedom at Mr. T's, but it brought on a smart fever. Though I was much indisposed, necessity was laid upon me to preach twice on Thursday, which increased my fever, and with indifferent lodging and the noise of children the night was very uncomfortable. Lord's Day 7 After being blessed with a warm and comfortable season while preaching to a large company at Mr. H.'s, I then rode to the Widow P.'s, where the word went to the hearts of the people with divine energy while I exposed to their view the polluted state of the natural man, and pointed out the sovereign remedy. Tuesday, 9. My mind was so intensely bent on seeking after more of God, that I devoted three hours to the exercise of private prayer, and found myself much drawn out by the Spirit of grace, in holy wrestling and communion with God. Being informed that Sister S. had slept in the Lord, I congratulated her felicity. Happy soul! She is taken away from the evil to come, and gone to Abraham's bosom, where the wicked cease from troubling, and where the weary are at rest. I have endeavored to banish all anxiety from my mind, and devote much of my time to prayer, and have reaped the gracious benefit thereof in my soul. On Wednesday I went to Magadi and had a large congregation but found that some of our members had begun to backslide, and that the society stood in need of purging. Thursday, 11. By a particular request, I preached a funeral sermon at the burial of Mr. W. R. There were a great many people, and some of them were cut to the heart while I enforced Ecclesiastes 9, 10. But afterward, at Mr. P.'s, my mind was somewhat embarrassed. Friday 12. In performing the last office for L.S., who was a Christian indeed, I declared, for the comfort of true believers, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Some attended on this occasion who had never heard a Methodist before, and the Lord gave me utterance and power. Monday 15. We have great commotions on every side, but in the midst of war, the Lord keeps my soul in peace. My heart was warm in preaching at C.S.'s, though the congregation seemed dull. The two following days I had communion with God, but not in such a degree as I wished to experience. I long to comprehend the length, and breadth, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that I may be filled with all the fullness of God, 
to live the life of heaven above, all the glorious life of love. Thursday, 18. At Mr. W.'s I met with Brother S.S., who informed me that the preachers in Virginia intended to abide there a while longer. Brother S. preached twice, and there was some small moving amongst the people. Lord's Day, 21. There was nothing remarkable under the word at Mr. T.'s, but there was a large company and some melting of heart at Mr. P.'s. Monday, 22. I met with Brother G. S., who informed me that my brethren, Mr. Rankin and Mr. Rhoda, had left the continent. So we are left alone. But I leave myself in the hand of God, relying on His good providence to direct and protect us, persuaded that nothing will befall me but what shall conduce to His glory and my benefit. There was both attention and concern in the congregation, which was pretty large, at Captain S.'s. Lord's Day 28 Brother G. S. was unwell with an ague. At Risterstown I urged the necessity of family duty, and showed them how they should train up their children in the ways of the Lord. Monday, 29. My soul was stayed upon God, and resigned to His unerring wisdom. I wished to be so subject to my Redeemer, as to move in conformity to His divine will, and in all my ways to acknowledge Him as my God and my guide. I spent part of my time the next day in reading Mr. Baxter's Gildas Salvianus, and esteem it as a most excellent book for a gospel preacher. Saturday, October 4. I rode thirty miles to G. B.'s to meet Brother P. D. My mind was spiritually employed in reading, meditation, and communion with God. Lord's Day 5. The congregation at G. B.'s were dull but at B.G.'s there was a melting. Tuesday 7. The word seemed to be made a peculiar blessing to the believers at I.H.'s, and the next day at Mr. K.'s the power of God was present, while I feelingly urged the people from Hebrews 4.16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. My spirit was also divinely animated in preaching afterwards at R.O.'s, though I rode twenty miles between the two sermons. Several old professors felt the reviving influence of the grace of God, and I was in hopes they would press on their way with renewed vigor. Such is the languid disposition of the human soul, that even pure minds require a constant stimulation to keep them in the way of duty. This is one reason why God permits our minds to be tempted by Satan, and our bodies to be afflicted with diseases. Saturday, 11. I attended and spoke at the half-yearly meeting of the Germans. And on the Lord's Day, after preaching at Mrs. D.'s, I returned to the meeting of the Germans, where Brother G.S. and myself both spoke. Monday, 13. Commotions and troubles surrounded me without, but the peace of God filled my soul within. We seemed to be in a strait, but my heart trusted in the Lord. These distressing times have lately induced many people to pay a more diligent attention to the things of God. So I have hopes that these temporal troubles will prepare the way for spiritual blessings. Wednesday, 15. A heavy gloominess hung on my mind. Brother G. S. and I rode to Mr. H.'s, and after I had enforced these words, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Then Brother S. exhorted, And the hearts of the people melted under the power of the word. We likewise saw the merciful hand of God displayed the next day, at Mr. W.'s, on the bank of the Potomac. Lord's Day, 19. As I was unwell, Brother S. preached in the morning on Thy Kingdom Come, and there was a moving in the congregation. He also preached in the afternoon at Mr. B.'s, but it was to a large company of stupid souls. Monday, 20. After I had preached, Brother S. met the class, 
and it was a very powerful season. He also met a class afterward at Mr. S. R.'s, and we were favored with a similar blessing. This has been a day of spiritual and peaceful exercises to my soul. At Mr. H.'s on Tuesday, we were blessed with an extraordinary visitation of grace. Thursday, 30. We have been detained by heavy rains at W.S.'s for three days. The times still wear a gloomy aspect, but our trust is in the providence of a superintending God. We have been greatly blessed, and seen great displays of the divine goodness since we have been together. And we have been made a blessing to each other. We now left Mr. S.'s and rode to Rocky Creek. Lord's Day, November 2. I cried in the morning to a large congregation at Mr. J. N.'s, We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And in the afternoon at the sugar loaf, why will ye die? And my soul was enlarged and blessed both times. I then rode to G. G.'s, which made about twenty miles in the day. Monday, 3. Our quarterly meeting began, and Brother S. preached on the subject of the barren fig tree. On Tuesday we held our love feast at nine, and I preached at twelve. Our brethren O. G., C., S. G., and S. D. all spoke. There were many friends from Virginia, and the congregation was very large. It was a powerful, melting time, and concluded in the spirit of love. Wednesday, 5. After riding thirty-seven miles, I came to Baltimore, but was very weary, though my mind was calmly stayed on God. Friday, 7. Went to Mr. G.'s, and on Saturday preached on Third John, 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Lord's Day, 9. After preaching with freedom of spirit and speech at the Forks, I returned to Mr. G.'s and declared, Ye are the salt of the earth. My soul has been kept by the grace of God, and calm on tumult's wheels I sit. Monday, 10. We set out for the quarterly meeting at Deer Creek. On Tuesday our love feast began at 10, and at half-past two I began the public exercise from Hebrews 13, 17, 18. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief. For this is unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience, in all things willing to live honestly. The preachers were stationed without any trouble, and all was done in harmony and love. Wednesday, 12. I rode back to Mr. G.'s in order to attend a quarterly meeting on Curtis's Creek. The Lord has lately kept my soul in tranquil peace, not much disturbed by Satan. I now purposed, by the grace of God, as often as time will permit, to read six chapters every day in my Bible. Saturday, 15. Great numbers of people attended at the quarterly meeting. Preaching on Acts 14.22, I endeavored to imitate the apostles, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. The power of divine grace was greatly felt in the love feast, and all our business was well conducted. Lord's Day 16. Having first preached at the Widow H.'s, I rode to Baltimore and preached there. On Tuesday I was blessed in a visit to Mr. G.'s. Wednesday, 19. Rode to Risterstown and found that God was my sufficient portion and my exceeding great reward. I wanted nothing pertaining to this world more than I possessed, neither clothing, nor money, nor food. Blessed be God! for his parental love and tender care towards me. Nothing on earth I call my own, a stranger to the world unknown. I all their goods despise. I trample on their whole delight, and seek a country out of sight, a country in the skies. 
End of section 26. Recording by Brian Keenan.